This program is brought to you in part by the partners and friends of Preflo Dollar Ministries. Coming up next on Changing Your World. You gonna want to please me when I finish with you. You gonna want to pray when I finish with you. You gonna want to lift your hands up when I finish with you. You gonna want to shout unto God with a voice of triumph when I finish with you. You gonna want to witness to somebody. You ain't gonna be able to keep it to yourself when I finish with you. You gonna want to give. Ain't nobody gotta get up and share no fifteen thousand scriptures about giving. You gonna want to give. If the preacher forget the offering, you'll remind him. I got to give to God. You don't know how. Good, he's been. Let him do the work. Hopefully, you're going to choose to let heaven determine your thinking because whatever choice you make, then that's going to be your mentality for today. Can you say that he's a way maker? Yes. Can you say that he's a God that sits high and looks low? Yes. Get the message of grace any way you want. Stream service live, 10 a.m. Eastern Time on Sunday with re-airs at 2 p.m., 6 p.m., and 10 p.m. Eastern Time. This is your world, so let's vow to make it a better place. Let every heart that needs to know you love. We have the opportunity to grow in grace when we're hurt by others. The more we let him into our hurt, the more he can help us grow in grace. Now, I picked hurt out because hurt is something that everybody is familiar with. Hurt is probably something everybody has gone through, whether you articulated it or, or verbalized it. You, everybody knows about hurt. And it, it, when we let God in our hurt, when we let God into our hurt, when we let grace into our hurt, then the grace of God begins to grow in that hurt situation. You got hurt, and if you, if you turn inward without taking Jesus with you, um, then you're going to handle it the wrong way. But if you'll let him in, he starts talking to you. You know, uh, look at, you know, you probably did the same thing to me, but I love you. And, and, and look at this and look at this. And all of a sudden you're growing in grace and considering doing something you would have never considered when somebody hurt you like that. The old you before you got saved, it was a get back thing. Oh, you hurt me. All right. All right. I got you. I got you. I know where you live. I got you. <laughs> no, but when you bring him in, there's this opportunity to grow in grace because he starts talking to you differently. You ever wanted to get back at somebody? Don't answer me. I'm just talking for, to get your hand out of it. <laughs> you know, just tell you the truth. I'm sitting here think, thinking about getting back at somebody right now. I know the Lord bought me here. <laughs> can, can you see how that works? It, it, it's practically speaking. You get hurt, so instead of you tripping out, you're going to pause a little bit, and you're just going to close your eyes, you're going to pray, and you're letting Jesus in, and he's speaking to you to respond opposite to what your flesh wants to respond, and you're growing in grace. Because you're considering being gracious, even though that other person was not. Wow. Let's look at the next one. And this is what I was saying before. Living our everyday lives is where we grow in grace the most. It's not just a one-time event that we grow in grace. It's, it's, it's living our everyday lives. Remember, Jesus promised that when we see him, we will be just like him. That's because we're spiritually growing. We should not see Jesus and be the exact same mess that he found us in. He found us in our mess. All right? And he took us just like we, we were, but he didn't want us to remain in our mess. He wanted us to grow spiritually. 
and, and the benchmark is to grow so that when he sees us, he'll finish the last bit of work and we'll be just like him. But I, I think the misunderstanding has been hang out in church all the time and then you'll grow in grace. And, and we do know we spend time learning, we spend time hearing, and, um, and we're teaching messages on Jesus and on grace, and, and you're studying it, and you're meditating in it. Yeah, all that is a part of it. But after you've done your study and you meditate and you're growing in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ, then living our everyday lives is where we grow in grace the most. It's every day. It's going to work and encountering those people at work. It, 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 it's, it's being out in public and encountering the people where you go and eat, uh, and encountering bad service, it, it, and encountering a sassy mouth on the phone when you're trying to pay a bill, it, it, encountering... Uh, it's, it, it's those times that we begin to grow in grace the most, not just a one-time event. It takes time to do this. It takes effort, in a, and our effort is depending on God, and it takes the strength of God to continue to grow in grace. And then finally, look at this one. If we walk with Jesus each day, as Christians should, growing in grace will be something that will come out of our relationship with Him. And that's why He desires intimacy more. If we walk with Jesus, and, and for us who are born again and we're Christians, it should not be if. It's something that we've, we've done, that when we made the decision uh, to accept Him and to receive Him as our Lord and personal Savior, then each day growing in grace will be something that will come out, out, out of a relationship with Him. Out of a relationship with Jesus Christ, you'll begin to grow in grace. The time you spend in prayer and the time you spend fellowshipping with Him and the time you spend uh, depending on Him to show you how to respond to this and how to respond to that, but Jesus, you don't understand, they took my money. And Jesus said, I got you. I'll make sure you get it back. And then you're growing in grace in all those situations. I, I, I'm really, I get, I get frustrated when people don't understand what this Christian life is about. It's living the life with Christ. It's not, you know, going in a cave somewhere and becoming some weirdo. And then when you decide to come to church, you just weird everybody out. Hey, brother, how you doing? This is the day the Lord hath made. You should rejoice and be glad in there. Oh, I'm, I'm, mm -mm. no. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? We got we to gotta stop playing the church games. I'm willing to start all over again to get you equipped in the right way of understanding how to live this life, how to do life, and not just do church and show up with weird stuff. It's, all, it's like church has become a circus with a bunch of clowns and a bunch of acts. And, 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 and I, I told you a while back, we shut the circus down, put all the clowns out, and now we're learning how to live like for real Christians. We're not just, you know, let's get in some revelation and do a, a ooh, ah, ooh, that was ooh, that's spooky. You don't understand how to live it. So we just, we just made it real simple. We, 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 we put everybody in the beginning reading class. Run, Jack, run. See, Jack, run. See, Jack, run, run, run. You see, growing in grace is necessary if we want to become more like Jesus, making an impact on the world that we are living in. We're not going to make an impact on the world if we don't grow in grace, and we're not going to grow in grace if we don't become more and more like Jesus. That's what this is all about. This is all about growing in grace and becoming more like Jesus. It is not about what you can get out of the Bible to benefit you. It is not about the laws of this and the laws of that and this principle and this principle. And oh, if you come to church, you'll get all these principles and you can be successful like me. Without Jesus, there is no success. You're not successful without Jesus. I don't care what you get and how much you get. If you don't get Jesus, you're not successful. If we're talking about being a successful Christian, you're not successful with all of the stuff. Now, if you get Jesus, all that comes with it. 
But if you try to get a principle or whatever to try to operate it away from Jesus, and that's what it became. It became, church became, let's go get another principle. What about Jesus? We'll talk about him later. <laughs> Second principle, to ground breakthrough. I can't, I can't, I can't talk about that right now, man, because I, I can't put Jesus on the sideline. That's, that's the whole deal. So I don't know what your motivation was to get born again, but boy, when I discovered that Jesus loved me so much that he made available to me this grace, and, and under this new covenant, it was not I will, I will, you will, you will. Under the new covenant, it was Jesus will, Jesus will, Jesus will, Jesus will, Jesus will. It's not I do the work, it's Jesus said, please rest, I'm going to do the work. I have seen y'all work, rest. <laughs> Let me do it. I'm going to take your messed up life and I'm going to pour myself in you. And I'm going to fix what somebody said wasn't able to be fixed. I'm going to give you a desire to do what you didn't want to do. Glory to God. You're going to want to please me when I finish with you. You're going to want to pray when I finish with you. You're going to want to lift your hands up when I finish with you. You're going to want to shout unto God with a voice of triumph when I finish with you. You're going to want to witness to somebody. You ain't going to be able to keep it to yourself when I finish with you. You're going to want to give. Ain't nobody got to get up and share no 15,000 scriptures about giving. You're going to want to give. If the preacher forget the offering, you'll remind him, I got to give to God. You don't know how good he's been. Let him do the work. Oh, my God. You're going to be all right. You know that, don't you? Somebody say, how you know that? Because God's working in you. That's what happens when you, when you come to a church and, and you get all this word. It's like seed, and it gets into your conscious thinking. And you don't know what, when you walk out the door, you, something happened, and you can't quite figure out because there were no emotions. You didn't fall out. You didn't nobody slap you. You just sat there. And the word just kept coming in, and there's something happens when you sit under that word, and oh, glory, you, you go outside, and now, now, now that you've been built up, now some demon-possessed person come, and they cuss you out, and they talk about your mama, and you don't know why you didn't cut them like you did the last person that did that. Why? Because he's working in you. Say it out loud. Say, he's working in me right now. You might not be able to see it right now, but keep watching. He's working in me right now. Hey, be careful not to judge me from what you saw three years ago in my life. He's working in me right now. Hallelujah. He's slicing off that flesh, and he's filling me with his grace. Hallelujah. And when you ask me what happened, I'll tell you, it's his grace. His grace is more than enough. His grace is sufficient. I am what I am by the grace of God. But I can't become a hermit and expect to grow in grace. I can get a lot of knowledge in that little secret room by myself. I can get a lot of knowledge and study time, but after a while, you got to go and test it, see if it worked. You got you to go test it out. And you ain't got to go far. Some of y'all, you got to do is walk out the bedroom. Bam, the test right there. <laughs> you got to go far.
husbands and wives, well, I ain't in love no more. You know, no, 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 no. There's some stuff you, you know, the, you, you need to go put through testing. I say, well, Lord, I thank you that I, I'm not a complainer. Oh, thank you, God, I don't complain. And then go right there and complain. <laughs> you know, I used to say I don't complain until I looked at the definition of complain, and it was just like it, expressing your dissatisfaction about anything. <laughs> I'm like, God, dog, why did I have to see that definition? <laughs> that makes me a, a more of a complainer than I thought I was. <laughs> but you keep letting the Holy Spirit work, and you start doing less. <laughs> Tab asked me something the other day. I said, praise the Lord. <laughs> and I knew she was thinking, well, you just, that's, that means you, you try not to complain about it. Because, <laughs> again, when you complain, the situation remains. Right. Nothing changes. And you're part of be partly responsible for it. You, you, complaining causes it to remain. So if you're trying to figure out why ain't nothing changed, and you're a complainer, that's why it ain't changed. You ain't changed. You, 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 you're causing it to remain the same way, and you stay the same, and it stays the same, and nothing changes. Woo! Y'all all right this morning? Y'all all right? Y'all all right? Y'all all right? Some of y'all looking at me like you want to cut me. I ain't, I'm just, I'm the messenger. <laughs> When we are hurt by someone, he uses them as an opportunity to grow in grace. It's then that our hurt can be used for something good and not wasted. God tries not to waste none of those things that happen in your life. While he didn't cause it, he wants to take it and use it as an opportunity. What you going through? It ain't nothing but an opportunity to grow some grace. And God said, I want to use it. I want to use every painful, hurtful, broken, hateful, disappointing, broke, misunderstanding thing that you've ever experienced to grow some grace. Now I understand what Paul was saying. Paul said, I, I, done, I, done, been to, I done went to God three times about this, this thorn in my flesh. And he keeps saying the same thing. And Paul was like, why you keep saying the same thing? The thorn is in my flesh. Handle it. Well, first of all, grow, I can hear God. First of all, I'm grown. <laughs> His response was, grace is sufficient. Uh, the more and more I realize that, the more and more it's a challenge to me to just move on through it. I'm not comfortable. I'm hurting. I'm in pain. I'm disgusted. Move on through it. There's an amazing thing at the end of this training. What is growing in you? What's growing in you? You'll be able to testify one day that I'm not the same. I'm not the same. And now, guess what happens? You want somebody else to get this. You want somebody else to receive this. This amazing wonderful grace of God. Three ways we grow in grace. Number one, three ways we grow. Number one, we, we grow in grace when we cultivate our ability to forgive others. We grow in grace when we cultivate our ability to forgive others. How is your forgiving mechanism? How is your forgiving mechanism working in your life? Because when you initiate forgiveness, you initiate 
growing in grace. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 13 in the King James says this, forbearing one another, forgiving one another, if any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, Christ forgave you, all right, by his grace he forgave you, all, so also you do the same, forgive others. The grace I receive, I want to make sure I bestow it upon somebody else. God has forgiven me, so you forgive others. And honey, what God did for us, he gave you of a 50 double trillion dollar debt. And when he asked us to forgive one another, it's like forgiving each other for a penny. He says, I forgave you, forgive others. Somehow we try to locate the reason why we don't have to do it. I ain't forgiving you. Why? You hurt me. What that got to do with it? That's got to be your attitude. I don't want to forgive you. And that's really the truth. I don't want to. Okay, well, God's nowhere in that. You done jumped back selfish again. I don't want to. But you did. And then if that doesn't work, well, I'm, I'm human. Oh, come out with that little old poor excuse. Because in actuality, when Jesus moved in you, he really ruined that excuse. You are no longer just human. Hallelujah, you are, you got, you, you a God human. You got a God living on the inside of you. You a superman. But we begin to recognize this, that this becomes one of the ways we grow in grace, cultivating. That, 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 that doesn't mean it's right there the first time. You're cultivating it, cultivating our ability which given to us by the grace of God to forgive others. Number two, we grow in grace when we cultivate our ability to show mercy to others. This is big. Mercy. That's showing kindness to those in need, whether or not they deserve it or can pay us back. Showing kindness to those in need, whether or not they deserve it or can pay us back. When we mirror the mercy of Christ to the needy, we grow in grace. Can you mirror the mercy of Christ Jesus? Look at Luke 6, 36 in the King James. Luke 6, uh, verse 36 in the King James. I want to mirror the mercy of Jesus. Be therefore merciful, as your Father also is merciful. I've met Christians who are like, yeah, yeah, but he didn't really mean that. <laughs> Anything you see in the Bible requires guidance by the Holy Spirit, which is why you have to have a relationship with him. But to not have a relationship with him and then just bypass certain things he's telling you to do, that ain't good either. You don't just make up in your mind, oh, well, I don't, I don't want to do it because I don't want to do it. We're not praying about doing it. We're not asking him to do it. But what, what, are we, what, what are we doing? There's a, there's a lot of issues out there that we can address. It's like the church, that's, it, it's like they just quit. I'm only going to do what I'm comfortable with. And he's, he's going to move you past your comfort zone. That's what's going to make you great. I think I, I said this last week, meant something I, 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 I read that Mandela said it was so true. He said, uh, when, he, when he goes through stuff, uh, he either wins or learns, but not lose. So he says, I don't lose anything. Anything I go through in my life, I either win or I learn something. Why do Christians have to go through adversity? We've all asked this before, but have you ever had an acceptable answer? In the eight message series, Maturity Through Pressure, Creflo Dollar gives clarity on the why behind the pressure we face. These pressures will be allowed to show up in your life to get you to the point where you are no longer depending on you, that you now will depend on him. There's nothing that you're going through you cannot outlast. 
outlast the trial, outlast the pressure. Trouble will come, but you will outlast it. I see this as an experience of hope and victory and development because it got rid of the impurities of depending on myself. For only 45 U.S. dollars for CDs or 55 U.S. dollars for DVDs, all eight messages can be yours today. Just visit CreflodollarMinistries.org and click eStore. Scan the QR code or call the number on your screen to get yours today. Are you ready to be forever changed by grace? The highly anticipated Change Experience Tour is back. Our first stop for the 2024 tour is Los Angeles, California. We'll be there in February, and then we're headed to New York City in April. Now I feel rejuvenated, makes me feel happy that I can go out and tell people about this grace that God freely gives. It's unmatched, and just being able to praise and be with everybody and that peace that came over me, like that was a moment that I truly appreciated. I'm glad that I, I drove four hours to be here this morning. In July, all roads lead back to the World Dome in College Park, Georgia for the biggest grace-based homecoming in the world, Grace Life Conference. Register now so you too can be forever changed by grace. Text CHANGE2024 to 51555, scan the QR code, or visit creflodollarministries.org to secure your spot today. Have you ever wondered how the financial support from our viewers makes a difference in people's lives? We receive testimonies every day from people whose lives have been shattered by natural disasters, failed marriages, bankrupt businesses, and so on. They share how our outreach efforts and messages about God's grace have changed their lives in a tangible way. And for that, we give God all the glory. Today, I invite you to prayerfully consider financially supporting this ministry. We know you'll be empowered to see real change in others and prosper in your own life. If God has placed it on your heart to support the vision of this ministry to reach the world with the gospel of grace, you may call in to make your financial donations or log on to creflodollarministries.org. God bless you. Look no further for encouragement to walk in the grace of God. The Creflo Dollar Ministries TV app provides rewarding content that is sure to nourish your mind and soul. He is the God of miracles. All it takes is a mustard seed of faith. All it takes is for you to believe and dare to stand and dare to trust God. Treat yourself to enriching messages from Pastor Dollar on grace and walking in the likeness of Christ. God has already given you his son and told you he'll give you everything else. He don't need you to try to exchange something to try to get something. All he wants is your complete dependence on him. Respond to me and show me that you depend on me. Download the Creflo Dollar Ministries TV app on your Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Apple TV, and streaming devices today to stream messages of hope, grace, and understanding when you need them most. The preceding program was brought to you in part by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries.